In this video, we're covering how to set up an ISO file along with how to dual boot. The only things you'll need for this video is a USB, at least 250 gigabytes of free space on your drive, whether it's a hard drive or SSD, and the ISO file that you'll be using. And while there's a method to set up an ISO without a USB, I really don't recommend it. USB, in my opinion, is the much safer choice. So now that just leaves us with drive space and an ISO of choice. We got plenty of drive space, and the ISO I'll use is the beta version of Corvi OS. Getting started now, make sure that your USB is plugged in, and in your search bar, type create and format hard disk partitions. Then once you're on this screen, choose what drive that you'll be using for your dual boot. For me, disk zero is my main drive that contains my operating system currently. Disk one is my two terabyte SSD, where I have it split currently to act as my storage. And lastly, disk three is my USB drive, which is currently unallocated. We'll want to start by formatting the USB into an NTFS drive, but I honestly think that for USB drives it doesn't really matter whether you use a FAT32 or NTFS. I personally believe NTFS is just the modern and better choice in most cases. So you'll see one of two things here, either unallocated space or a simple volume already set up similar to what I have on my main OS or storage. So if you do see the unallocated space, what you want to do is right click on the space, new simple volume, next, next, next and then once you get to this page here just make sure that it says ntfs default and then any sort of name that you want to give it afterwards hit next and finish now before we move on i want to point out a common issue that you might see is right after setup if it doesn't show ntfs like right now it shows raw for the file system this leads on how to partition if you've already had a file system put in place or if you run into this bug so by right clicking just hit format choose the file system that you want hit ok it's going to say that it'll erase all data on it, hit OK again, and now it's properly set up with NTFS. Pretty easy so far, right? Well, that ends here. Prepare to tremble for this next part, it's the hardest thing that you'll ever do. On the drive where you want to install the operating system, we need to prepare the space for it now. The methods being used are either through unallocated space or through shrinking. Starting with the unallocated, right-click, new simple volume, next, 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 and make sure that this is NTFS, default, and once again, change it to whichever name that you want before hitting next again, and finish. And now moving on to method two, if you already have a formatted drive, right click, shrink, and it's gonna show you how much leftover space that you have available. And we want to set this to at least 250,000, and anything above that is even better. It'll shrink itself and become unallocated space again, where you just need to follow the same setup as before. But since I don't need the space, I have the full one terabyte. We can right click back on this again and extend the volume. And I know I said that was the hardest part earlier, but I lied. That is actually coming up right after this next bit. Right now we need to install Rufus, a program that's used for setting up ISO files. And while there are alternative options out there, Rufus has always been my go-to. Follow this browser link or click the link that I left in the description where you'll in 99% of cases want to scroll down and choose this top installer. Don't worry about the other ones. So open it up, select your USB drive, which in most cases should do that by default. Drag in the ISO file that you're using. It'll take a minute to scan. But after it does, make sure that the partition scheme is on GPT and the target system is on UEFI. Afterwards, give it a name, something that you'll remember, and change the file system to NTFS and leave the cluster size to default. Afterwards, hit start, and then the Windows user experience will pop up where it's completely fine if you check all of these. It basically saves you some time with the setup of the ISO. So you can just hit OK. It's going to say that all data on the device for your USB will be destroyed, so hit OK once again. And now give it like five to 10 minutes and it'll be completed. And now that Rufus is done, this is the true scary part for the majority of you out there. Stick me on your phone real quick because we're gonna restart your machine. I'll wait here a sec. And now that you're back on mobile, make sure to turn me up because a lot of people say that my audio is quiet. So just go ahead and turn it up real quick. My bad, my bad, my bad. So once you're here on desktop and Rufus is done, Open up the start menu, click on your power button, and then hit control shift on your keyboard, and then hit restart. Let's move on to the next step. You should start on a screen similar to this one. Proceed with hitting use a device, where then you want to choose partition one for your USB. And after a quick restart, you might come across the language settings, choose as you please, along with keyboard layout and the license agreement. And then finally, the location of where we'll be installing our operating system to. Make sure the blue highlight is on top of the space that we set up earlier and hit next. Do not hit load driver. 
that is a very common mistake. And after another quick restart, you should finally see the boot menu. My original Windows is on the lower volume number, while my new install is located on volume 8. And you can't really see it with my immaculate screenshot here, but at the bottom, I recommend you change the defaults. When you go into there, you'll have an option to choose the timer for the selection menu. And I would just make it 5 minutes to give you plenty of time to choose what boot you want to use. And you can also choose the default operating system that you want to load at the end of the automatic timer. Once you're done messing with the defaults, click into your new volume in which it will start to go through with some installation and might restart a few times, but eventually it should lead you back here one last time in which you can finally reach your desktop for the new operating system you installed. If I helped you out, make sure to leave a like. You don't have a choice. This is payment for watching the video, and I will find you with my YouTube statistics. Especially you, Chicken Parm, Caxi, Electron? Wait. Yeah, I'm not calling you that. Anyways, I'm being for real now. Show some love and support. You know I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.